The purported aim of socialism is to create a utopian society where all men and women, as well as the 53 other genders, are happy. No one wants for anything. Greed, hate, racism, and selfishness are abolished, and we are all at one with our environment. The aim of the socialist is to create a better human being, and in so doing, create, generate a better society. The socialist, motivated by motives and a virtue unstained by the greed and depravity that mar the common man, sets himself up as the savior of humanity. From his or her elevated dais, he devises plans and proclamations to save humanity from itself, from the selfishness that will lead to its destruction. Such an important task cannot be left solely to the power of persuasion. The socialist requires the coercive power of the state to impose his will on all that degenerates beneath him. Because the goal is so crucial, after all the survival of civilization itself is at stake, any and all means may be brought to bear. So even mass murder and genocide have been used as mere tools to achieve the grandiose vision of the socialist. The goal of environmental socialism is to make Mother Earth whole, to save her from destruction and return her to an ideal state. This pristine planet has an ideal temperature that apparently existed just prior to the Industrial Revolution, a temperature that must be maintained at all costs. Rainforests and old growth forests remain untouched, hurricanes and tornadoes are rare, water is pure, and the oceans teem with life. Environmental socialism replaces the happiness of man with the vitality of the earth. As in all socialism, any and all means are reasonable and acceptable to meet these ends, and using the coercive power of government is the only way to reach the goal of repairing all the damage humans have wrought. This begins with onerous environmental regulations on industries perceived to be the greatest enemies of Gaia and the personal behaviors deemed to be unhealthy contributors. The Green New Deal, ecocide laws, and other proposals made by dim-witted politicians and entertainers to dupe children are all supposed to reduce our impact on poor Mother Earth and at least slow the destructive juggernaut of modern civilization. To some, this is the ultimate grab for state power, for nothing can exist outside the realm of its influence. The use of scare tactics, including screaming about the imminent extinction of all life on Earth, is a wonderful tool to silence opposition. But we cannot stop there. The destruction of economic and personal freedom is not enough for these are only the worst symptoms of the problem. Here is the difference. The traditional socialist sees the creation of the perfect man as his goal, and once he has broken enough eggs, the ones that are left will blossom and spawn a perfect society. Man is the goal, his perfection is the purpose. Therefore, while each individual man has value only as long as he can contribute to the goal, at least some men will be valuable. To the environmental socialist, man is a parasite an innately destructive actor. No person has any value. Individual life is a cancer on the earth. If individual life has no intrinsic value, if each person is viewed as a malignancy, the annihilation of man and all his accomplishments becomes a worthy goal, and no means need be spared to achieve it. Consider not just the evil implications of some voices in the environmental movement brave enough to be honest about their desire for the human race to become extinct. Its impact on a society that comes to accept this worldview is devastating. If you believe you are a parasite, where do you find meaning in life? If we are all parasites, no one will place any value on the life of another. We will treat one another like cockroaches or ticks. We have seen a movement within the younger generation of some refusing to have children, a reluctance to bring any more parasites into the world. Progress is evil, and the totality of human history is a malevolent stain on an innocent world. A society that abhors life, knows its history, and is terrified of the future cannot abide for long. 